Hawk is and amazing. We have decided to build a fire pit, so we are on our way into Home Depot to look at the stones they have for sale. Jason loves to take pictures to remember things, so here I am posing beside the paving stones at Home Depot. We decided to make the fire pit three levels high, so we ended up getting 30 stones, 10 for each level. Here we are loading up the cart and counting the stones. Let's do a quick count. And then we'll do a final count. Okay. Where's the fire? The roses were on sale and it was so tempting to get one to put into the greenhouse, but I controlled myself and I didn't buy any plants this day. We have enjoyed that fire pit so much. It was very simple to build. We checked a few other YouTube videos. All we did was to lay the stones out in a circle and then mark the edge around that. Then we took all the grass out, put the stones in place, stacked them, made sure they were level. And on the inside, we put a layer of leveling sand to of course help level and also as the base. And then we put a layer of like pea gravel or whatever it's called and then a layer of the red lava rock and we have loved this fire pit so much what we made today we made a little fire pit we made a fire. So this will be our, our maiden voyage we're gonna try to get a fire going here and we'll see how it how it behaves and uh, you know it says it's 48 degrees no excuse me 43 degrees Fahrenheit well wow. that's about 720 p.m. on Sunday Dece evening? Yeah, December 6th. That's correct. 2020. And we did this together. We did. Every step of the way. So let's... Planning, shopping, and building. Bless you, Fire Pit, and all of those who partake of your charms. Yes. It's looking good so far. Burn, baby, burn. Check it out. We'll be back with you in a few minutes. Yeah. Suddenly it is snowing. This day was so pretty, I thought I would just take my camera out and walk through the backyard. You can see the fire pit, and I wasn't super clear on the order in which we did this. Uh, you put the pea gravel and lava rock in after you have stacked the stones three levels high or however high you're going to make it. I don't spend as much time in the yard as I should lately. I've been so busy working and packaging, but I do love to come out here and just enjoy it. It's very soothing. This, of course, is where the potatoes were planted, and they did well. It looks like there might be some chickweed in there. Not exactly sure. Trying to decide what to plant here next time.
I love my little greenhouse as inexpensive and simple as it is. It is still a fun little place. I keep the fence around it because the deer would eat everything. Uh, that's a container I had some rosemary planted in and I just recently transplanted that into the ground. So going inside, there is a definite temperature change and I feel like having the soil sort of banked up around the outside of the greenhouse and on the inside around the base is helping it to stay warm, warm-ish at least. We haven't had any nights in the teens yet, but we've definitely hit the low 30s. Look at all the plants. The parsley is beautiful, and it looks like the mandevilla is still alive. There's nasturtium. I'm trying to get a close-up of the bloom, but it's not, not working out so well. It's still pretty. And the ginger, and let's see. Just straightening up in here a little bit and enjoying the break. The condensation in here has been pretty impressive. It's like its own little ecosystem, and I'm always amazed at how, um, just how damp everything is in here and the plants are thriving. It will be interesting to see what happens with this when it gets really cold in the, you know, deeper into the winter. This, of course, is the cat mint or catnip. It still smells good. And it's a nice break just to come in here for a few minutes and enjoy the plants. Plants are so healing, and um, I look forward to expanding this over the years. Even though it's damp in here, a lot of things do need to be watered. Some of the bigger pots, I'm amazed that this heirloom tomato has a bloom on it, and it's still alive. So we will see, it's an experiment for me to see how long it survives and if it could possibly even live to the springtime and maybe have fruit next year. We will definitely see. I ended up in a local thrift store and loved looking through these old albums. Uh, they had a lot of really good titles and the albums were in great shape. I didn't buy any because I didn't really have any use for any of these, but it was definitely tempting. Even the labels, I know we all love paper. And uh, there were some cool books in here as well for housing record albums, but I didn't purchase any of these at the time. Just enjoyed looking at the titles. This gold leaf spirea is probably the only real cutting I have from my old garden. Well, one of the few, and I love that it's thriving so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.